Liz Truss says there's been uh, a complacency and it's got to end. Would you agree? Uh, yeah, in, 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 on balance, I would, really. Um, one of the problems with tr talking to a crusty old retired general is, you know, I can immediately start telling you what it was like 30, 40 years ago. I mean, I joined the army in 1964 as a cadet, which was barely 20 years after D-Day. And in those days, we had three divisions in the British Army, the Rhine, based in Germany. We had a strategic reserve division. We had an air mobile brigade, air, an airborne brigade, a commander brigade, and so on. Um, and, uh, you know, we were very committed around the world. When the Cold War came to an end, uh, and we took that very seriously, uh, and it went on for 30, 30 plus years. When the Cold War came to an end, I think we, we did become complacent. We took a peace dividend very quickly. Uh, we got involved in Iraq back in 1990. But really what we moved into is an era, what was called wars of choice. You decide whether or not you want to be involved, and you decide on the sort of level of commitment um, based on certain criteria. And in my view, over these last 20 years, we have become complacent. We never really put sufficient resources in terms of military into Iraq or Afghanistan, uh, and we never we weren't prepared to, to you know to stay there for the length of time that we had been involved in, for example, the Cold War. So I think we have been complacent. And what's happening in Russia, Ukraine, and indeed elsewhere? I mean, autocracies, dictatorships, China, and so on, has made people realise that we do need to think again about how we're going to engage in not just defence policy but foreign policy and other aspects of our external relationships as well. I mean, we're rapidly heading towards a point, aren't we? Might, might be there already, that if we didn't include the reservist numbers in the army figures now, we actually wouldn't technically have enough people to call it an army under the, under the general rules. I mean, our figures are so far down. They are, and uh, you wouldn't expect me, you know, as an ex-army ex man to, to disagree with that. I mean, the bottom line is the, the British Army would not fill a football stadium, Premier League football stadium, Old Trafford or whatever. The numbers of reserves have fallen dramatically. The numbers of regular forces are below the target that was set when there was a reduction. It was supposed to go to about 82,500. We're actually recruited well below 80,000. Um, and there is, there is this issue of mass. It's interesting, the Defence Secretary is always speaking against this. But the reality is numbers count. And, um, for example, in Ukraine, the Ukrainian military has lost the equivalent of the whole of the British Army's infantry thus far in this campaign against Russia. So, you know, these numbers are important. And um, again, you know, the, the problem is, I, you know, I know civil servants who would like to see the army reduced to 60,000. And I just think this is crazy. It's crazy on the basis of you want to engage with the world, that, you know, in, in terms of global Britain and all the other things the politicians talk about, then you need to be prepared to put the resources in to do it. You need to assess the threat. What is the threat out there? What do we want to do about it? What are the options for dealing with it, be that in soft power or hard power? And in terms of the military, what are the different capabilities you need to, to do it? The Navy, the Air Force, the Army, and in particular today, of course, cyber and, uh, and other, other domains, as they're called.